Hello! Today we're opening a box that came in the mail. I haven't done this in quite some time um, for a couple of reasons. Wait, I'm just I'm just doing my farming here quick. Uh, first, I was unemployed for quite a bit, so I couldn't really justify buying frivolous things, the sort of things that you happily open from a box in front of a camera. Um, and then, after I was employed again, um, I started considering the possibility of moving, um, which again makes it seem quite silly to buy a bunch of stuff if you're just going to have to turn around and move it, or more likely store it, and not really uh, enjoy it when you could just wait until you're somewhere more permanent. But, who knows, whatever, moving is a whole thing. Um, uh, let's just focus on what I got now, because sometimes you just need to get something. Something to, to reward yourself. Ugh, so, what all is in here? Oh, there's some good stuff! Like these bags of air. I was running low on bags of air. And of course, you know, I just hate breathing normal pedestrian air that everyone has access to. I, I like the exclusivity of uh, taking a whiff of the airspace by Poly Air. Um, it's, they're experts in protective packaging solutions. Uh, they do foam, bubble, mailers, VCI, which, uh, you know, is a very exciting technology. So let's just... Uh, Ooh, oh, that was some fine, fine air. Oh, we're breathing good today. Okay, all right, enough of that. Um, for real though, we got the latest volume of One Piece. So, I don't know, my manga buying rate has dropped off pretty severely, um, partially because of this anticipated move. Um, and also, I don't know, it's just like, started feeling a little embarrassing to buy localized in, uh, English language manga when I could be buying Japanese manga and just getting good. Um, and Japanese manga is often cheaper. It's kind of cool, you know, it's the original. Sometimes it has things that the localization doesn't. Conversely, sometimes the localization has things that the original doesn't. Um, but I'd say it, it goes more often that things are removed. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It just, it suddenly started feeling like I was admitting defeat, <laughs> that I was admitting that I would never get to a point at which I could read Japanese manga as fluently and freely and as have as much fun as I do reading it in English. But for something like One Piece, I put these concerns aside just because I have the first 91 volumes and the idea of the 92nd volume existing and me not having it was simply an unacceptable, truly unacceptable. So we got that in a similar vein. I got volume 18 of One Punch Man. Um, I have the first 17 volumes, so it seems about right. These have bonus chapters. Sometimes I actually hadn't read the bonus chapter, which is kind of cool. Uh, they're usually quite substantial. They, they have some kind of lore information that sneaks into them. Uh, definitely worth a read. Usually a little more comedic than the main series. Uh, so I like doing that. I, I think it's kind of fun to, to leave some things for when you actually own the Tenko Bon. It just makes that experience all the more special. Uh, moreover, I just find that I reread the series like so much. <laughs> like uh, maybe more than any other series. If I'm just kind of in the mood to kick back and read some manga and just thoroughly enjoy myself. One Punch Man is way up there. So I'm, I'm happy to, to accommodate that by having the books. So we got these two volumes. Then we got this. What could be in here? Well, it has a resealable package. What is the point of that? Something smells terrible. Is it my air? My, my precious air? I don't think it's any one particular thing. It's just this, whatever this shipped from doesn't smell so great. It's a real, like, cleaning supply type smell. Maybe it's this. Maybe I'll just get a... No, that's not so bad. Anyways, this is a tri-wing screwdriver. Um, so, this is the screwdriver. Yeah, this is this is how I carry my GameCube controller now. 
I, I think it's like so freaking sweet. <laughs> um, it's the con it's the screwdriver that can open up a GameCube controller. So I play Super Smash Brothers Melee pretty regularly. I've used this controller since 2011, so that's almost nine years of continuous service. And not once had I opened it up and cleaned it. <laughs> and I knew this was a thing that people did. They cleaned their controllers. You open it up and there's all sorts of gunk that accumulates. It seeps in through these cracks. If you think about how disgusting and sweaty your hands get while you're playing, it's no surprise that that gunk would accumulate somewhere. And so it makes sense to me that people clean their controllers. I just never did. I don't know why. I just... I just avoided it. I just didn't think about it. I just pretended like it wasn't happening. But then I got an issue where my control stick wasn't inputting full directions properly. Like I would be hanging on the ledge, and if you press back, you should fall off the ledge. But I would be tapping back and not falling off the ledge. So we opened it up, and there was so much gunk on the control stick box that we figured it was stopping the control stick from actually going all the way to the left. It was keeping it a few millimeters away. And after I removed all that gunk, it's actually louder. Isn't that disgusting? I can, it's, it's noticeably louder. The control stick and the C-stick clacking. The C-stick much less so because the gunk is mostly in the control stick. Um, so yeah, I borrowed my friend's tri-wing to do that. But I realized this is actually something that I should start doing regularly. Also, when I was putting it back together, it's like a little looser than it ought to be, and that was bugging me. So at the very least, I'm going to tighten it up, and then hopefully I'll get into a routine of cleaning it with uh, some regularity so that it never gets this bad again. Isn't that insane? It's louder now just because of the gunk I removed. But yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, it's, it's quite straightforward, uh, taking it apart and cleaning it and everything. So I, I really do recommend it if you're the type of person that uses your controller very often to, to bust it open every now and again. Uh, we might do another video, I guess, doing a little takedown of it. Could be interesting, could be fun, let me know. But yeah, happy to have this, just because I won't need to borrow it from people. Uh, the last thing I got is this large book, Soul of a Nation, Art in the Age of Black Power. This was an exhibit I saw at the De Young Museum in San Francisco. Um, I I'm, I'm thieving right now. And I have, it can kill me, so I gotta keep healing. That's what's going on, that's why I'm like clicking really fast every once in a while. Um, so yeah, I saw this exhibit, I thought it was fantastic. I took some pictures of things I liked, but you know, you can never really capture the experience of a gallery outside of something like this, the actual gallery catalog. So this will contain every piece of artwork featured in the gallery, um, which is kind of like a rotating gallery, it appeared at several museums. Um, and then uh, commentary, I assume it has a superset of the commentary that I read and heard during my time at the gallery. Um, so I love buying books like this, especially for things I've seen, because not only is it uh, informative and educational and just like a great read, but it also is like a souvenir. It'll, it'll remind me of my time there. I came close to buying it at the gallery, where of course it was also on sale, but I was like, I don't want to carry this heavy hardcover book for the rest of the day and for all of my plane rides home I'm sure I can just get it on Amazon so I checked and yes I can and it was even cheaper than it was in the gallery which seems suspect um, yeah I was blown away by this gallery um, the variety of it I thought was really really cool so I don't know if it's gonna be this is still the introduction I don't know if it's gonna be arranged in the same ordering as the gallery I saw. It looks a little different, but they have sections like this where it's uh, a sculpture, um, kind of like sculpture collage, found pieces, found art, whoops, um, putting together kind of a mosaic of meaning. Uh, and then more like painting, but abstract painting, very symbolic type painting, um, density of, of images and meaning. Um, yeah, I don't know, some really, really powerful pieces. Um, 
some of the stuff that really got me was they had oh these are really cool too these were this is a section um, by a group called afro cobra afro cobra sorry which stands for something i can't remember what <clears throat> but uh yeah it's like images made up of words and letters like this picture of malcolm x has excerpts from Malcolm X speeches at the bottom, if you see that, from a distance. It kind of just looks like mosaic art or, or pointillism or something. But then when you get closer, ooh, is that cool? Oh, man, it's it's so hypnotic. So you're just enraptured just standing there looking at these big pieces all composed of these colorful kaleidoscopic details. There's a lot of photography. Um, my favorite was a photo of Sun Ra, uh, the jazz musician. I wonder if I can find it in here. Oh, I like this one a lot, too. This is another photograph called Rhythmic Cigarettes. You, you, I think the name is just phenomenal. And, and just the look that if you just follow the cigarettes in this paint, er, picture, I don't know, it does really convey a sense of rhythm. Um, uh, I'm still, I still can't find it, but they had, yeah, yeah, okay, we're getting close to it here. They had a lot of, like, revolutionary posters from the Black Panther era, um, including a copy of the actual original Black Panther manifesto. Um, oh, this is so cool, too. This is a map of, like, uh, resistance sites and local groups that are, are forming. Uh, uh. Oh, this, no, this, this, sorry, sorry, I miss, I misremembered what this was. This shows incidents of um, violence across America. <sighs> yeah, really, really amazing. So amazing variety um, going from the most kind of portrait to very abstract art like this, which I just love to see in person. In a book, it's hard to get across what's so amazing about this, right? It just kind of looks like a texture. Um, but when you allow it to occupy the entirety of your vision, when you when you stand in front of it and witness its hugeness, um, it's completely different. It's a, it's a much more emotionally resonant experience. But it's like nice because now I've already seen it, so it, it more just kind of reminds, reminds me of that rather than... Uh, just being like, huh? Yeah, really good. I wonder if in the future we'll have more like VR galleries that give you a better sense of that. Oh yeah, yeah, really cool. Very, very glad to have this. Oh, this was a cool one too. Um, it's a uh, curtains made of barbed wire and chain, and it just has this weird mixture of of gracefulness at a distance. These these kind of curving lines and this nice sense of, of weight and sway but then when you get close when you realize what the materials are made of it gives you this real creepy feeling that just crawls up you but yeah yeah really cool stuff um i i highly recommend seeing this gallery if you get the chance i'm looking forward to reading through this and, and getting even more context Getting a deeper appreciation. Oh, I really like this one too. It's called Bag Lady in Flight. And it's kind of a pair of wings and it's entirely made out of paper shopping bags, uh, which are just arranged in this kind of 3D-ish way that they, they pop out of the wall a bit. It's uh, this, this, yeah. This mixture of the stories being told by these pieces being so sad such suffering, such injustice, and yet the existence of these pieces, the, the creative effort behind them, the, the testament that they, they stand to prove through their existence and through their exhibition, um, it becomes inspiring, becomes a, a sense of solidarity. Yeah, good stuff, really good stuff. Uh, I'm glad I thought to order this right away, because when I looked at it on Amazon, there was only a few copies left, according to them. So, yeah. I guess that's it. Kind of a weird haul. Art book, manga, tri-wing controller. This is like myself 
in a nutshell. Uh, all I needed was, ooh, some chocolate. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, we'll eat a piece of black chocolate. This is really nice black chocolate. I didn't eat it during the previous video, but I've had some since, and oh boy. It's like right at the sweet spot for me, between bitterness and sweetness, creaminess and, and kind of that flat chocolate feel. I don't know. Mmm, mmm, that's so nice. <laughs> Ooh, Zane is beating Axe. Up 2-1. That doesn't happen very often. Or like at all in years. Okay. That's all. Bye-bye.